from uh, this collection, which is this collection. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a novelist and a poet. Sometimes I get confused because there is uh, stories in the poems and there is poetry in the novels. And also it takes a long time to read a big novel, so I had a lot of ideas about novels I wanted to write, but once I got an idea, I didn't want to write it. So I thought about, uh, I collected all these ideas and I thought I could uh, make them as poems instead. So in this collection of, uh, of uh, poems, there is 118 novels. And now they're free for everyone else to write. <laughs> because I'm never going to write them. And uh, also I think it's interesting because they're like two different objects. This is big. This is smaller. This, the poet poems in this one is shrink. They are smaller. And it's exactly the same, except for this one it says novels, poems by Bortorgerson, but here it says novels, poems by Bortorgerson, now in paperback. <laughs> so it's like taking the conceptualism and unconceptualizing the conceptualism because Magritte's painting said this is not the pipe, this says this is a paperback. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> it's very, it's very it's easy. It's, it's just what it is. But I can't read from this because it is Norwegian. No, I got the third edition of that uh, uh, collection, and it's very floppy and messy. But I, I try to read from it. Okay. One, the protagonist is a participating subject. She is on volume. Two, the novel is full of chairs where old women and some younger men rest. Three, during a heavy epilepsy attack, a nurse realizes the Millennium Bug everyone feared so much New Year's Eve 1999 was a metaphor for everything else that was going to happen in the new millennium. <laughs> and it is all the everythings the novel highlights. <laughs> Four, the narrator is an old woman who writes about the younger woman who writes about her girlfriend who writes about her mother. Everyone writes in this universe. Five, the protagonist can be two places at once, in the car and in the kitchen, at work and in the store, in the bed and in the bathroom, in France and in Israel. No one understands how this can be possible, no one thinks it's true. They won't, they can't accept it. Six, an old man realizes after a long time of sickness, sickness that life can't be funny if it's not sad. <laughs> Seven, the protagonist can walk on water but prefers mountain climbing. <laughs> Eight, <laughs> a child, a girl is sent from Earth in a space rocket. When the girl celebrates her 88,000th birthday, she passes the star Proxima Centauri. 68 billion years later, she reaches the end of everything, lands on a gigantic stone. The space rocket is so tiny. No, I got to be rational. What am I going to bring back? <laughs> Nine, the protagonist is a stone. The protagonist's friend is a man who is pushing the stone up a hill, lets him roll down, <laughs> pushing him up, letting him roll down, day after day, week after week. The stone is despaired. Can't he stop? The stone wants to scream, but the stone doesn't have skills transcending what is common for stones. <laughs> the novel is strictly realistic. Everyone agrees that the novel is an interesting twist on a known story. Anyhow, it's soon forgotten, but it's still to be found at flea markets in towns with average colleges. <laughs> <laughs> Ten. <laughs> Every night a flock of wild horses visits a town, stands staring. How nice it would have been to be able to just walk in there, disappear in the crowd among the buildings, says the smallest of the horses. Eleven, a goat. The protagonist wishes it was half goat, half human. Google's half goat, <laughs> half human. 
thousands of pictures appear of creatures, half gold, half human. This means, thinks the gold, I'm not as strange as I thought. But it doesn't dare tell the farmer that they are much more alike than the farmer thinks. Twelve, a man has sex with a tree in a forest, not very big, but big enough to make the man feel that he's not threatened. <laughs> Thirteen, two portraits, one in oil and one in watercolor, discusses their own and each other's looks. Fourteen, two nuclear missiles shot out from a base in the Pacific has a crucial existential conversation about free will before they hit their target, a city in Central Europe with 800,000 citizens. 15. A long dialogue between two human beings. It's not clear who the protagonist is, the one who is crying or the one that hits. 16. In the universe where absolutely everyone has superpowers, a little group stands out, they have no skills at all. Only they can save the world. <laughs> Thank you.